as I speak more and more about politics, as I speak more and more about the national elections in South Africa that are coming in 2024, if not sooner, if by some miracle they come sooner, I want you guys to remember to try and get back your power. Try and regain your power. Not just in politics, but in all aspects of life. We speak now, or I speak now at least, about looking into your family, looking into your community, to get back to finding your own power and solving your own problems. But I'd like to say that even within your family, you need to get back your power. We speak about some of the families that own amazing businesses, but what is stopping you and your family from building their own businesses? What is stopping you and your family from baking their own bread, having their own cows that they milk for milk every day? What is stopping you from making your own clothing? What is stopping you from building your own properties and your own homes? What is stopping you from generating your own electricity, learning how to build an infrastructure that allows you to generate electricity, energy? What is stopping you from building your own pipelines from a river so that you have your own water that is filtered and clean as well, etc.? What is stopping you from building your own technology company? What is building you from building your own apps? You know, building your own websites, getting you and your family to win. Some people speak about buying black. Some people speak about buying South African. But what about buying from your family? The reason that your family, so much unemployment, such high unemployment, it's because you guys are not buying from each other. You and your family take your money and you buy from other people's families. You and your family take your labor and you give it to other people's families. You and your family members take your ideas, your innovations, your creativity, and you give it to other families. What's stopping you as a family from making and recording your own music? What's stopping you and your family from making your own TV sitcoms, making your own series, making your own movies? What's stopping you guys from traveling around the world? What's stopping you guys from manufacturing your own vehicles? It takes one person in one family to create a brand such as Suzuki, Toyota, uh, Isuzu, Ford, BMW, Mercedes-Benz, Mahindra, Tata. It takes just one person in one family and they get the family involved and they say, let's push. Black South Africans in particular all know what the Indian community does and that they get their children after school to and work for the family business so that they can learn. They know this, but they don't apply it to their own children. Why are you not building your own family business so that your children after school or during school holidays can come and work for you? They will see white Afrikaans children, school holidays, weekends, going to the family farm to learn how to farm, learn how to look after livestock or crops. What's stopping you from getting your own farm? What's stopping you from getting your children to go and work on your farm every single weekend on school holidays? And the beauty of learning skills is it doesn't even need to be yours. You can go to the same Indian business person that you see and be like, can my child come and volunteer to learn here along with your child? They study in the same school. They go to the same class. I see your child is here every afternoon on weekends. Can my child come here for free? You don't have to pay them. They're going to work for free. I just want them to learn. Go to the same school friend that your child had that is maybe a white Afrikaner. It doesn't even have to be a white Afrikaner. It can be a, a black child, an Indian child whose family has a farm and say, please, can my child come with to the farm to come and visit, to come and learn, to come and help out for free? Maybe the child comes home with a pint of milk Maybe they come home with some maize tomatoes. They're learning. They're learning. What is stopping you from empowering yourself? Stop outsourcing your power, your thinking. Write your own books. Your family needs to have a book on business, on money. Your family needs its own religion. Your family needs its own clothing line. Your family needs its own stuff. Learn to look within. You are powerful enough. You are strong enough. Jay-Z speaks about everyone looks at the end result. But it's actually all about the process. Process. Speaks about Kobe Bryant and how Kobe used to be obsessed with practice. And by the time he murders a certain match, a game, by the time Lionel Messi scores a hat-trick, by the time Cristiano Ronaldo scores so many goals, by the time LeBron James dunks in a crazy match, by the time Serena Williams gets a grand slam, by the time Beyonce Knowles is lighting up a stage, that's the end result. The juice is in the process that every day, the waking up every day to warm up, to jog, to stretch, to put in the practice, to hit the gym, to rehearse the music, to write the songs, to shoot the hoops. Every single day, 
That's what you need to emulate. Another great piece I once found on TikTok said, the man who loves walking gets much further than the person who just enjoys the goals. The man who loves walking achieves certain goals without even flinching. The person who's just trying to get to a destination will only go five kilometers. The person who's in love with walking walks 500 kilometers. And that's a lesson for almost everything in life. If you are in love with practice, with rehearsal, if you are in love with going some, over something over and over and over again, by the time you succeed, it's, that's just like a trophy at the end of the day of, oh, well done. You're like, oh, I want to get back to practice. That's what I live for. Another piece I saw on TikTok was this gentleman saying, the man who can afford the beach house doesn't get to enjoy the beach house. And the reason is simple is because he enjoys work. He enjoys making the money. I used to love telling the story of someone like Ali Kodangote, the wealthiest African and the wealthiest black man in the world. He has got so much money that he never needs to work for the rest of his life. I think at his peak, he was worth 23 billion US dollars. If we were to calculate that at like a conservative interest rate of 5% a year, that guy can make so much money and never have to work another day in his life. So someone would be like, why doesn't he just quit? And my question was, quit and do what? Go sit on a beach? Go on holiday? Go blow money? He may have done some of those things, but it bores him. What he truly enjoys is work. He enjoys being in the office. He enjoys closing deals. He enjoys creating things. If you take him to a beach, he's going to start getting withdrawal symptoms. And he's going to be like, I want to go back to the office. I want to work. That's what he loves. So the person that can afford the mansion, the beach house, the Ferrari, a lot of the time they don't get to enjoy those things because they are at work enjoying their true love, creating things of value, which pay them, which allow them to buy the private jets, etc. Learn to get your power back, become stronger and do something absolutely amazing for your family. Gaten McKenzie says, become the Rockefeller, become the person in your family that takes your family to the heights of success, that creates jobs for your family, that gets land for your family, that creates homes for your family, and that allows your family to become a worthy family in the families of this world that have, grown, have done great things. Pen you are the black pen. I wish you nothing but a great day further. Cheers.